Welcome to our channel Top Reddit Story make sure to subscribe our channel and leave a comment down below saying I subscribed, and we will try our hardest to reply your comment. ER doctors and nurses, have any of your patients surprised you with their amount, or lack, of pain tolerance? Fire medic here. Farmers seem to be tough. One time a guy pulled into the front ramp. Got out of his truck and walked up holding his severed forearm. In his other arm. Get him in the truck. Take off. Along the way he states he lived down the road and wanted to get to us quickly. When asked why he didn't call 9 one one he replied I just cut my arm. I ain't dying. Also had a battle of the bulge vet tell me he didn't need a blanket. It was minus 7 with wind chill. I was a tech in the ER when the EMTs brought in an elderly woman with what they said was a sprained ankle. She had slipped while mopping a floor at work and her co-worker had called it in. Turned out she had broken both of the bones in the lower part of her leg. But was sweetly chatting with us. I was impressed as soon as I saw those rays. EMTs had no idea and had splinted her ankle over where her bones were broken. Typically. Broken bones in the legs. Unless there's a huge amount of angulation displacement. Do not cause a ton of pain. Unless moved. We see that often in the old people with hip fractures as well. They're usually sitting there still and having no pain. But the second you try to move it. They're in excruciating pain. Same goes with trying to bear weight. Not a doctor. But my goddaughter was born very prematurely. Requiring a major rope and heart surgery at 2 weeks old. We were told by her docs that since she'd gone through so much surgical trauma the first few weeks of her life. As a neonate. Her pain receptors nerve endings would not develop normally. They gave us the example that if she put her hand on a hot stove as a kid. She would have sustained a severe burn before feeling any pain whatsoever. She never cried as a kid when she got shots fell down banged into things. Even when it was enough to draw blood, I suspect her medical history was the cause. Working in a hospital has taught me the downside of abusing painkillers Drew Gus patients constantly come in here with long term substance abuse issues and now that they are actually hurt, MVC, broke bones, etc, you can give them enough Drew Gus to put down a horse and they still feel everything. That is one of my biggest fears. I had major back surgery when I was 14 so I pretty much live with constant pain. I will do everything I can to avoid taking a Vicodin so that when I get older and I really start to hurt. I haven't built up a tolerance. The only thing that sucks about it. Is that pills expire before I use them all and so when I really do need them. Getting a new doctor to prescribe them is really hard. They always try to treat me like a junkie trying to score. And while it is understandable it really pisses me off. I had a patient with an open tip fib fracture, the bones in the lower leg sticking out and below that it looks like jelly, trying to walk away apparently unaware of how bad his leg was. Of course he was incredibly drunk at the time. Radiographer here, as a student I met a patient who was a typical little old lady. She came in with far too many shopping bags and walked extremely slowly. She'd been sent by her GP because she'd fallen getting out of the bath a few weeks previous. So we brought her in and took the first image, AP pelvis if you were wondering, and her pelvis was absolutely ruined. Turns out she had slipped and fallen with one leg in and one leg out of the bath and taken the whole fall on her. Vag. Not wanting to cause a fuss this woman had ignored the pain and carried on her life as normal for weeks. Long enough for the fractures to be fairly healed. Albeit in a strange way not really resembling a pelvis much anymore. Not ER. But actually a cashier at a fast food place. A woman ordered two meals. And since she was a little older, really old actually, I offered to bring her food to the table so she wouldn't have to wait. I get there. And her husband had wads of paper towels stuck all over his arms with electrical tape. And his right hand and part of his face were a mix of blood and second degree burns. Turned out he was working on his lawn mower. And the engine blew up on him. They stopped fall and chugged the way to the hospital for burns. And the metal they couldn't get out. He was acting like it was nothing. 
I was chatting with my physiotherapist one day about pain tolerance and she said that she once had a, ex maybe, coke addict as a patient whose tolerance was absolute zero. She couldn't even touch him without him perceiving it as painful. Let alone stretch or manipulate his body. She said he was a very challenging case. Edit. Fixed spelling. That sounds extremely tough for the doctor especially. Was that because of the guy's addiction? Working as an EMT. I got called a 64 year old female. Slipped in her house. Possible sprained angle. When we got there. The woman is sitting in a chair with her legs stretched out in front of her. But she had long pants and slippers on that covered the entire ankle so I couldn't really see it. When we walked in. She was talking and didn't really seem to be in any pain at all. So I figured this was going to be an easy trip. I kneeled down in front of her to take a closer look. And wasn't I surprised to find that it wasn't just broken. It was ducked right up. I mean. The foot was at a 90 degree angle to the outside. And it was also leaned down so what should have been the side of her foot was facing straight down. And the bone that should have been holding the ankle in place was pushing against the skin on the inside of her ankle so hard that it was about to rip through. I was bewildered at the fact that at that moment she said. It doesn't hurt. So I hope it isn't broken. She hardly made a peep on the ride to the hospital. 35 miles. Very bumpy. Come to find out she had multiple sclerosis and that makes people feel pain differently. Not an ER nurse. But a medical technician at a couple of large events in my country. Working at a racing track. I had both of these people come in on the same day. Male. 54 years. Swedish. Small cut on hand. His reaction to me pouring water, saline, in his wound. OWOWOWOWOWOW. It hurts when you put disinfectant in there. Be careful. Male. 32 years. Finish. Deep cut in right forearm. His humeral bone was visible. No. It doesn't hurt. Now just tape it the duck up so I can get back on my bike. Edit. Yes. I mean the humerus when I say humeral bone. And yes. I mean the upper arm. Not a native English speaker. And also it's 1am. Not a doctor or nurse but this happened to me. I completely shattered my knee and part of my leg after I was running and slipped on some ice into a stone wall. I was with a group of friends and all they saw was me slide and hit the wall. They came over and asked if I was okay. In a normal voice I said I couldn't move my leg. No tears. Screaming or anything. No one believed me but after a minute or two I convinced them to call 911. The whole time I was waiting for ambulance, about 30 minutes, I was talking to them normally and no one believed I was actually hurt until I started going in and out of consciousness. Right as the paramedics got there I started to wake up. They got out and they didn't think anything was wrong until they cut my pants off and saw my femur was almost protruding out of my leg. I had no kneecap and tops of the tibia and fibia were protruding out. They took me to hospital. No drew guts in the ambulance. As I was joking around with them, that is. Asking if I'm allergic to anything I told the apparently stone walls, they got me to hospital and rushed me into ER the doctors came over and were shocked I wasn't screaming or crying. Then about an hour after the initial injury the pain finally started and once they started moving the leg about 3 doses of morphine, because one wasn't enough, and one of Demerol I don't remember the next couple days besides bits and pieces. But all the nurses and doctors told me I had one of the highest pain tolerances they have seen. Although I imagine it wasn't really my choice mostly the brain just shutting it down because I was in so much shock and had so much trauma. I've had a few patients in trids swear that their pain was 10 stroke 10 while eating. Drinking. Laughing. Playing on cell phone. I'll chart whatever number that they said and then put in the notes. Patient laughing. Insert verb or emotion. I had one nurse that when a patient would say a certain number, she'd hand them a card that would say, at a pain level of 7 you would be sweating. Vital signs would be elevated. You would be nauseated and probably vomiting. Then she'd ask, you sure you're a 7? 9 stroke 10 would change their answers. 
My dad has an unusually high pain tolerance. He was cleaning a fishing pole in our backyard once when he didn't notice that the pole had splintered and pulled his hand down on it. The force caused the pole to snap in half and drive itself all the way through his hand. He stood up. Walked in the kitchen with pole hanging out of his hand and calmly asked my mom if he should just pull it out or go to the ER. Since it was a fiberglass one. He opted for the ER, just in case something was broken off inside his hand. The list goes on and on and gets worse. The other was when he fell off a ladder and shattered his leg. The bone came through the skin and he was itchy about going to the ER. I'm a nurse who used to work in orthopedics. The amount of people who would guzzle laurel morphine was unbelievable. Older adults. S little old ladies. Would just take two paracetamol and would be totally fine. I am a middle aged guy who has worked heavy construction most of my life. I have broken. Everything. Had 6 surgeries in the past 7 years. My daily dose of meds is 10 stroke 325 nor coated that is just so I can keep working with my current injury load. Anytime I end up under the care of a new DRRN especially in the ER I feel like a jackass trying to explain how much I take. It's embarrassing. On top of that I have all my basic medical cert so I know what it sounds like. Not an air doctor. But I went to the air with my younger brother after a ski accident. My brother fell on his back off quite a big drop. Causing his sternum split open. A few runs later he said he was sure something was wrong with his chest so we eventually got to the air. The doctor was shocked that he was able to continue skiing after it. And that he wasn't writhing in pain when it was touched. My brother's explanation was yeah it hurts. But I can't do anything about it. Edit, writing to writhing. Five year old child with a severed finger. Half hanging off. Cool as a cucumber and not even upset. Mum was in hysterics. I have a similar story involving a 21 year old female. Severed her index finger in a door and I was the first responder. I controlled the bleeding until we could get her to hospital but she took it like a champ. I didn't hear a single peep out of her mouth. Med seekers and junkies coming down have the same level of pain tolerance. Barely touch the junkies and they flip out due to pain. Whereas the med seekers attempt that sheet and overact. I saw a guy try to fake a seizure and it was the funniest sheet ever. He was curling his hands up like he had CP and leaning his head back to gather spit so he could foam at the mouth. Med seekers will always be allergic to morphine and need dial or didn't date of them. I don't think I have met anyone with a high pain tolerance. Some chick came in with cysts on her ovaries and declined meds because she was in recovery. So that is actually pretty badass. Nurse here, while in school. I had a 7 year old girl who had broke her hip by getting bounced off a trampoline. They lived a few hours out of town and when it happened. They knew she was hurt. But not how bad. So her parents put her in the back of the truck and hauled her. For 45 plus minutes to their local hospital. She got there. They did x-rays and found it was why too bad for them to treat and that she needed to come to us. They rushed the family out. Without anything for pain for this little one. For another hour plus ride to our ER. This girl didn't shed a tear. She was hands down the toughest patient I've ever had. Had a 19 year old do the same while skateboarding and I had to pull him out of the car while another nurse held his leg in place. Some people will amaze you with their strength and braveness. ER doctor here. My intern year in residency. I saw a 17 year old kid who. When while playing hockey. Tried to stop a puck with a gloved hand. It struck his fingertip. Injuring the base of his nail. Causing a significant deformity. His nail bed needed repair. Which requires first removing the nail. That is done by bluntly dissecting, read, separating, the nail from the tissue below it. If your stomach didn't turn reading that and imagining it. Congratulations. You have no soul. Typically, we use a numbing agent to eliminate sensation to the entire finger using something called a digital block. I put it in. After 10 minutes. He still felt me touching his fingertip. I tried putting some around the nail. He still felt everything. His mother said his father actually had a similar thing. Lidocaine didn't work on him. 
I offered him a different numbing medicine. We can inject Benadryl in that case, or even knocking him out. He looked at me in the eyes and said doc. Just take it off. Without anything? Yeah. It's fine. They fix our cuts without numbing medicine. But it's gonna hurt a lot. I have to scrape. I know. So I went at it. He grabbed a towel with his other hand and I went to work. 45 minutes later. The nail was off. He was repaired. And I replaced the nail in its rightful place. The kid didn't even make a noise. TL. DR. Hockey players are ducking badass. When I was studying nursing I saw a man who had broken his knee in a motorcycle accident 3 days before. The knee was at least 3 times its normal size. The doctor asked him about the pain and he told him it wasn't that bad. He was mostly annoyed at his family who had taken him to the emergency room. My grandmother wouldn't take pain medicine. Not sure why. But even getting dental work done. She didn't want numbing agents. The only time I know that she took pain meds was some aspirin after getting t-boned while driving and hurting her shoulder. She passed away last year from ALS a few weeks before her 80th birthday. She was the most independent person I've ever known and even having to rely on her kids for help. She didn't complain. I broke my wrist when I was 12. After a bad bike crash. I flipped the handlebars and landed on my neck and slid a couple dozen feet. The impact shattered my helmet. Anyway. In the ER. Nurses are setting up an IV in the arm that wasn't injured when I explained I landed on my neck and it was hurting. They asked where so I instinctively used my broken wristed hand to point. Every single person in the room goes ooh ooh and just kind stops and looked at me. And I guess I was in shock because I kinda just looked around like WTF happened. Patients in a sickle cell crisis. I've pushed up to 14 milligrams of dial ordered. 1-2 milligrams at a time. Into these patients without a resulting change in vital signs or mentation. However. I've also seen young men competing in rodeos who have been stomped by a bull a few times come in with broken ribs and a new mothorax saying. It's just a scratch and declining pain medications. I am a radiographer in an ER. We frequently have to move patients with broken bones to get our pictures. The elderly have a surprisingly high pain tolerance. I've seen elderly patients move limbs with obvious breaks to accommodate our needs without a peep. People with the least pain tolerance seem to be the younger crowd. Ranging from 15-30. They whine and wail from the slightest touch. And more often than not. The ones with no breaks whine and scream the most. First time posting. When I was 8 I managed to squash 3 of my toes with an anvil and I kept on walking. My dad, former EMT, said that he didn't know how I was still walking around. We bandaged it up and went to my doctors on an emergency call thing he used to do and they took an x-ray and came in with this really weird look on his face. I shattered 8 bones and they had to do surgery to rebuild my foot. I've since been stabbed twice, in quick succession. And the admitting nurse wondered how I was concussed while nearly bleeding out. I'm an oncology nurse. My patients have some of the highest pain tolerances I have ever seen. They literally have tumors taking over entire cavities in their bodies. Huge masses pressing on places that aren't supposed to be pressed on and literally eroding through their skin and they will ask me for pain meds when I have a second. It amazes me. What are some simple things you can do to make yourself more attractive? I've learned that as a man I can either get away with scruffy hair or a scruffy beard. But never both. I'm currently rocking short neat hair and a stubbly tramp's beard. Holy crap you're right. I never put it together before. But if I'm bumming it and do my hair. I look rugged. While if I'm clean shaven but leave my hair messy I look suave. But if I'm scruffy and my hair is messy I look homeless. Nice insight. If you don't like something at least see the appeal in it. People hate it when you blatantly hate something without giving it a chance. But do you see the appeal in blindly hating things or do you just blindly hate it? Yes. Have interests or hobbies. Don't let your spit dry out close to your lips and form a grainy white coating. Guy in my workplace is like that. Nice guy. 
but I'm always scared a big gloob of white. Starchy. Melted shortbread looking gunk is going to escape the chasms of his lip opening and embed itself in my face. Dressing a little nicer helps a lot. I'm usually just a t-shirt and jeans kinda guy. So when I do khakis and a button up. People usually take notice. Nothing too fancy. But it seems to have an effect. On a similar note. Dress to fit your body type. Some examples. Don't be the guy that wears an overly large shirt which fits awkwardly. If you're a bit bigger in the stomach area. Consider tucking your button down shirt in. It'll make you look skinnier. Wear the right style of jeans. Physically, a very simple skincare routine of face washing and moisturizing gives you a glow. Very simple workouts like push-ups and sit-ups and squats, and, 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 make a fairly quick and noticeable change in posture which makes you walk more erect, jiggity, and is apparently an attractive tray. Mentally, read. Have interests and learn how to share knowledge. Don't be a complainer. I don't mean pretend everything is fine all the time but don't let yourself engage in, or especially start, that low level itching that so quickly becomes a habit. Try and find something positive to say if you are struggling to make conversation. And if you can't then express your opinion plainly. Don't talk about being annoyed by something. Talk about being disappointed. Don't be the person who is always tearing stuff down. I cannot tell you how unattractive it is when somebody around you whines or is negative a lot. And once someone notices you're doing it, they can't unnotice. Also people will stop wanting to be open and honest about how they feel about something around you in case you're negative about it. If all you have in common with someone is a love of putting stuff down and complaining about things then one day in the future you'll realize that the only thing left you haven't yet complained about in detail is each other and then the real unhappiness will start. If you change the way you look at things. The things you look at change. There's kind of a notion like why don't my friends do anything cool? Why are they like this? I wish my life was full of really awesome people. But the reality is that you can be the one to make it happen. To be who everyone would like to be with. Take a shower every day and wash yourself thoroughly. If you smell nice. It's a big plus. I pride myself on smelling good. I'm a big guy. I look like a dork. I dress like a hobo but I smell fabulous. I love it when people tell me I smell good. Because there's always that hint of surprise in their voice. I look like I should smell like pot and salty garbage. But I don't. Pretend to be confident. Whether you have high self esteem or not. Other people seeing you confident is a definite plus one. As a bonus. Eventually you won't have to pretend anymore. Don't overdo it. Though. It's so sad for someone with very low self esteem to overcompensate and end up looking overly cocky or full of him herself. Head up shoulders back and tighten your core when you're walking if you want to look and feel more confident change your posture even if it means faking it eventually you'll start to believe it learn to breathe correctly a lot of people are shallow breathing ducks breathe from your stomach not your chest and set aside a few minutes every day to take very deep breaths this will do wonders for your stress levels a weary heart is oftentimes visible on your face Drink more water. Eat more vegetables. Stretch. And exercise. If you don't want to go to the gym then get off Reddit. Put on music or a podcast. And go walk outside for at least 30 minutes every day. Your body is meant to move. Do it. Respect yourself and be much more gentle with yourself. People are finicky. One minute they like you. The next minute they don't. The only constant is yourself. So be more attractive for you. Stand up straight. Smile. Brush your goddamn teeth. Take a goddamning shower. Wear some deodorant. This does not mean shower yourself in perfume. I'm looking at you. Axe holes. Ask questions about other people. One of the biggest turn offs for me is when people don't ask questions about others. It gives me the impression that they are self-centered and don't care about anyone else. Seriously. Like. Don't be fat. 
How many great looking fat people do you see and then think? I would love to have sex with that person? None. Being attractive is the most important thing there is. If you wanna catch the biggest fish in your pond. You have to be as attractive as possible. Make sure to keep your hair spotless and clean. Wash it at least every two weeks. Once every two weeks. And if you see Johnny Football Hero in the hall. Tell him he played a great game and tell him you liked his article in the newspaper. My trick? Go to grocery store. Fill bag with cosmetics and health foods. Get home. Dump everything out of bag. Put bag on my head. Continue to do nothing different. Get a haircut. Buy new. Nicer shoes that don't cost 19.99. Invest in some button downs that are form fitting, not baggy. Invest in slim fit jeans or chinos. A nice fitting pair of jeans looks good with almost anything. Girls also like seeing nice buds too so don't get them too loose. Do things that broaden your horizons. Take something you do and do it bigger. Do things completely new. Go where you're least comfortable. Do the opposite of what your gut tells you every once in a while. Don't let your problems define who you are. I know a few people who have nothing to talk about expect for their bipolar depression. Or their failed relationships. Or how they have no friends. ETC etc. You shouldn't ignore these things. Or pretend they don't affect you. But those are the sorts of things that people who are close to you get to know. Don't bring them up in casual conversation or a first date. This isn't exactly simple. But it's the most important. Identify and confront your big personal flaws or shortcomings. For me. It was realizing and accepting I had an anxiety problem. And so I bit the bullet and spent a year working with a counselor on that. And it changed my life. At the same time. I stopped thinking so much about why I wasn't seeming to be attractive to women. And focused instead on trying to live really fully and openly. I trained for and ran a marathon. Had a lot of time on my hands. Read a bunch. Went to lots of concerts. And got over my fear of rejection by going on a lot of first dates. Nobody who's emotionally healthy will want to be a solution to your loneliness problem they'll be a person with a full. Vibrant life who sees you as someone who also has a full. Vibrant life that's worth sharing. Get yourself a toothpick. A leather jacket and some aviators. Slick your hair back with some shiny sheet and get a muscle car. We're getting into having money now. Which is actually the real answer. Stop smoking. If you smoke. Better skin. Better smell. More money for clothes. Wish me luck. Day 5 now. By the way you're all blessed with a fabulous look. Switch things up. I'm usually a jeans and shirt kind of person. But when I put on a dress. Or even a skirt. It not only gives me a little confidence boost to be wearing something out of my norm. But people tend to notice. That little confidence boost can be picked up on by other people. Lose weight. I've known many people over the years that turned out to be gorgeous as duck when they lost weight. This is going to sound silly. But honestly. Just being a decent human being. Don't say anything behind someone's back you wouldn't say to their face. Treat people with respect. Own up to mistakes. Be someone people look up to for those reasons. Because in the end it's not going to matter how physically attractive you are. Some of the people I've been most attracted to haven't been lookers. But they are genuinely kind people and the kind of people I want around. Learn to cook. I learn to cook with shrimp every day I cook shrimp with different flavors and styles. They cook fast and are small and ready to control a few at a time. It gave me an understanding of flavors and the difference in cooking something and overcooking something. Don't be rude. Seriously. You could have a face carved by God himself. But if you're a major douchebag it will take your attractiveness level down several pegs. People who are genuinely kind. And friendly. Are way more attractive than those who are not. It doesn't matter if your appearance is a 10. If your personality is a 3. Then you're a 3. Kill all the people more attractive than you. 
After shave perfume. If a guy smells nice. I notice him. Buy clothes that fit. This is huge. You can pick great clothes you can match them and make them look awesome. But if they are too loose or too tight it's all for naught. Be confident in getting across what you do and do not like. Nothing is worse than trying to make decisions for someone who says I don't know or whatever you want to everything. It may be a small thing. But it makes a huge difference in others perception of you.